Hey what's up guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at another keyboard application. This one is Swipe, which you probably have heard of. It's like the number one third party keyboard. It's been around a lot longer than iOS has offered third party keyboard support. and was definitely one of the first to the party when it opened up. So if we launch into the Swipe app itself, as usual with third party keyboard apps, there's not a whole lot going on here. You have the setup, which leads you to the setup instructions. Now, if you're not familiar with that, go check out my Gboard review, where I go a little more in depth on that. We also have themes. Now, one of the problems with Swipe is a lot of the themes are paid here. So you get colorful themes, and you'll see they're 99 cents each, or $2.99 for the entire pack. You also get animated themes here. There's a few of those. And you get the winter theme here, which is also a dollar. So that can get pretty out of hand if you feel like switching the theme of your keyboard around a lot. Then you also have tips here, which just gives you a few tips about how to use the keyboard itself, shows you some of its features. So as you can see, we are now in the Notes app, and I'm going to take you around some of the main features of the Swipe keyboard itself. So obviously there's the main feature, which is Swipe Typing, where you basically glide your finger between the letters that you are trying to type. Once you get used to it, it's actually incredibly fast and very useful. Most people that use it really, really like it. You also get quick type up here, and you will get emoji suggestions in the quick type, which is something you do not get in the stock iOS keyboard, which is kind of cool. There are also some quick shortcuts here, so you can swipe from X to the spacebar, and from M to the spacebar to get certain characters. You can also swipe from the comma to the spacebar and from the period to the spacebar to quickly put those characters in. Not entirely sure why that's doing that. There you go. Um, you can also swipe from the character key over onto the character keyboard to get whatever you want, just like the stock iOS keyboard, which is pretty useful if you're trying to get as fast as possible. So as you might have noticed, there is a swipe button down in the lower left, which is what gets you to most of the other features of this application. So you can hold on that and you can swipe up to emoji here where you'll get an emoji keyboard. Now this is an interestingly laid out emoji keyboard. You basically swipe up and down to get through a particular section and then left and right to switch sections. I'm assuming once you get used to this, it wouldn't be that hard to figure out, but as someone coming from the stock keyboard, it's not exactly intuitive. You can also get to your favorites, as well as your recents, and then back to the keyboard itself. So if we press and hold on this button again here, you'll see you have three more options. You have next keyboard, you have number keyboard, and you have swipe settings. So if we jump into number keypad here, you do see you get a full screen number keypad, which is really convenient if you're entering in a lot of numbers all at once. Go back here, you can tap and hold, and go up to swipe settings. Now in swipe settings, it will just be in the keyboard here, which looks a little awkward, but it kind of works. So you do have themes, you'll see you have a light, a dark theme, you also have sand and an earth, and a sun theme. So those are your free themes, anything else you will have to purchase. You do have auto correction here, which you can turn on or off, you have auto space here, you can turn that on or off, keyboard sounds, ask to add words, and then you have languages here. Now you can add languages specifically into swipe. Right here, you can pick the languages you want, you can download others, or you get these few that are downloaded automatically. So you can add those, and I will show you in just a second how you get about changing those. Then you get a personal dictionary here. Now this will automatically add words that you type in often that are not in the dictionary. So when you go to type them, it does not try to autocorrect them out for you. Now you can delete words from this, and you can also add words to this if you so please. You also get a what's new and about. All of that is pretty uh, self-explanatory, so we can hit back to go right back to the keyboard itself. Now you can see this is the dark theme here, as I just changed it in the settings. So when you want to change the language of the keyboard you are using, you can just tap and hold on the space bar and slide up and down to get to different languages. So that just about covers it. If you like what you see here, you are probably going to like Swipe. There's nothing really hidden, there's not a lot of bugs, there's nothing wrong there. It's just a personal decision on what third-party keyboards you like. As far as I'm concerned, I would give it a 3 out of 5. And that is because I do like the keyboard, but I prefer using the stock keyboard. And if I'm going to use a swipe keyboard, I will use Gboard instead, because I do prefer having all of those Google features baked in there. So if you're just going for swipe, 
you can get the free Gboard app, which has swipe gestures and Google built in, and it's free as opposed to the 99 cents for this. But if you really like what you see here, 99 cents I would say is worth it to have a keyboard app because it is something that you're going to be using very regularly. So thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing. I post new videos every single Sunday. So until next week. Wait for the truck to go by.